So we're going to talk about solving radicals. Well, sometimes radicals are written with the uh, fractional exponent, such as in this case. So the way to rewrite that is to understand that the top number, the numerator goes with what's shown. And then the bottom is your index that's going to appear on your radical. So this is what I mean. So if I'm rewriting this, I'm going to write it as five is equal to, well, I know I have a radical and the radicand is this part. So that's what goes under it. And typically what happens is that numerator is what goes with the radicand. You don't really have to show the one, but just so that you understand what's going on. And then the bottom part is the part that is your index. So in this case, we, when it's a square root, we normally don't see that two, but it's understood that there's a two there. So that's how you would rewrite this. Now, what you would also want to recall is that we are trying to undo. Another word in math for undo is to use the inverse. So you are familiar with, like if you have a, an addition sign and you want to undo it, you would subtract. If you have a multiplication and you want to undo it, then you want to divide. So, <clears throat> or you may be used to seeing a division symbol. I'm sorry, I, I showed a radical. So if you have a radical, which is the same thing as a square root in this instance, the inverse is to square it. And then also if you have a cube root, the inverse is to cube it. So if, as long as you understand those rules, solving radicals will be a breeze. All right, so let's go back to our problem. What we're trying to do is get rid of the radical. So in doing so, I just told you to do the inverse, you have to square. Well, if you square one side, you have to do the exact same thing to the other side so you can balance the equation. And now you just simplify. So you end up with five squared, which is simply five times five. And then the whole purpose of doing the inverse is to undo, to get rid of it. So once you get rid of it, you're only left with the radicand, which is m plus one. Now you just wanna solve for the variable m. So you're gonna subtract one on both sides, which gets rid of that one on the, uh, the constant on the right-hand side. And so now once you simplify, you have m is equal to 24, or you can flip it around. m is equal to 24 it means the same thing. 24 equals m is the same as m equals 24. Now, you have to be careful when you're solving for radicals, you have to check it to make sure that it works because we're looking for extraneous solutions. We've talked about this before in other videos, but just in case you forgot, whenever you're trying to solve, you have to make sure you check your work for extraneous solutions. So this one's pretty easy. What you wanna do is you wanna go back to your original problem and then you wanna substitute in this answer to see whether or not it works. So before we box it, let's make sure it works. We're gonna take five is equal to, instead of M, we're gonna replace that with this 24 that we set. And plus one raised to the one half power. Well, you might see it better again, rewritten as a radical. So this is really five is equal to the square root of 24 plus one, which is 25. And now you just check your word. Does five equal five? Yes, it does. So therefore, this is your solution. So that's how you solve a radical when you have a fractional exponent. All you have to do is just rewrite it. Okay, let's try another example. So this one looks scary to some people, but the rule is if both sides of your equation have the exact same rad radical, all you have to do is drop it. And the reason you're gonna drop it is because if I am trying to get rid of that cube root, I said what I have to do is to cube it. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So again, I'm getting rid of it. That's all that means. So when I get rid of it, what's left over is simply the radicand, 5x minus two is equal to 3x plus four. So again, if you ever see that both radicals are the same, just drop it and then you can go ahead and solve as normal. 
So I wanna put all my X's on one side, which means I'm gonna subtract three X. I personally like to move all of my X's to the positive, the larger positive X. Okay, and then I wanna move my constant um, negative two. So the inverse of a negative two is positive two. I'm doing it all in one step. You don't have to. And so if I did it correctly, I'm going to get a zero for the constant on the left-hand side, and I'm gonna get a zero for the variable on the right-hand side. And now I just want to go ahead and simplify. 5x minus 3x is 2x, and then four plus two is six. Now I'm gonna divide both sides by three. I'm sorry, two, I do that all the time. <laughs> and the reason I chose two is because that's what's stopping x from being by itself. And now x is six divided by two. Well, six divided by two is three. Yay, I wanna say I'm finished and this is my answer. Well, I can't. What I have to do now is substitute that information in to make sure I don't have an extraneous solution. So this is what it will look like. I'm gonna have the cube root of five times instead of x, three minus two. And I'm gonna set it equal to the cube root of three. And again, replace that x with a three plus four. And when I simplify, I have to see whether or not they do actually equal each other. So the cube root of five times three is 15, 15 minus two is 13. And the cube root of three times three is nine, nine plus four is also 13. So yes, this worked, therefore this is the correct solution, three. So that's just you double checking for your extraneous solutions. Okay, and then finally, if I have an example that looks something like this, when you're trying to get rid of the radical, if you can, go ahead and isolate. Um, if you have a constant, or in this case, I have a loose variable. So I want to move that variable over to the left-hand side. So since it's a negative n, I want to move it over as a positive n. That way, that goes away. And so when I rewrite my problem, I have 2 plus n is equal to radical n plus 8. So now I'm trying to get rid of the radical because I'm trying to solve for my variable. Remember, the word solve means your answer is going to be variable equals something. So what I want to do is I want to square it because the inverse of a square root is squaring. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. I have to put the entire expression in parentheses and square it. Well, what that means is I'm going to expand this. This is now 2 plus n times another two plus n. That's what this means here, to take that and multiply it times itself that many times. And then over here, well, once I did the inverse, I just simply got rid of it and I'm gonna bring down the eradicand, which is everything that's under the radical. That's what that's called the radicand. All right, so now I can either use the box method or I can use my foil. It's up to you, whichever way you want to do it, as long as you um, simplify it out. So two times two is going to be four, and then you end up with two times n times another, or plus another two times n. I'm just simplifying it as I go. So this is going to be plus four n, and then n times n is going to be n squared. And again, we have this n plus eight. So now I want to put this in standard form which means I'm going to have to move the n over and the eight over. In order to do that, I have to change the sign. So if I subtracted n on this side, I wanna subtract n on that side. If I subtracted eight on the right-hand side, I wanna subtract eight on the left-hand side. And I want to put it um, with the like term. Okay, so again, I'm gonna rewrite this in standard form, meaning I take my highest exponent and that's what's going to go first. So I have n squared. And then, so basically I'm going backwards so I don't confuse you. Okay. And then I have my 4n minus 1n, which is 3n. And then here I have 4 minus 8, which is going to be a negative 4. And on this side, since everything 
was moved, I simply have zero. And again, this is important because this is telling me I am solving, which means my answer is gonna be in the form of variable equals something. So again, I can use my box method to factor. If this is not factorable, I can use the quadratic formula. I know it's factorable, so I am going to go ahead and let's do the box over here. My first box is n squared. The last box is whatever this last term is. So negative four. And I would multiply the number a, well, the number that's in front of your n squared times the constant. So one times negative four is negative four. And I'm trying to find two factors that will multiply together to give me, well, when I add them together, they will give me that positive three. So those two factors I know are going to be four and negative one. So what I wanna do with that information is put it inside of my box. Doesn't matter which goes where. So I will have, I'm gonna go ahead and put four in here, negative one in here. I keep up with my signs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor going to the left. What I can take out on the first row is simply an n. What I can take out on the second row is a negative one. I always take the sign that's closest to my where I'm, where I'm writing. All right, so now I do the same going vertical, going up. And what I can take out, the greatest common factor is an n. And the greatest common factor between the four and the negative four is this time a positive four because again, I look at the sign that's nearest where I'm writing. So those are my factors. And what I wanna do over here is I'm going to write n minus one times n plus four, and I'm setting it equal to zero. What, when I'm solving, again, my answer should be in this form. So I'm going to set each one of these equal to zero and solve for that variable. And that's simply just doing the inverse. So I'm gonna add one, add one, subtract four, subtract four. When I do that, n is one, and here n is negative four. So again, gotta check the work. So I have to go back to my original problem. So let's just do it over here so you can see it. And I have two is equal to well, I have two n's, so that means I'm going to have to do it two times. So in one case, I said that n equal to one. So one plus eight, this is what I'm replacing, minus, and then I have another n I'm replacing with one. So this is what I just replaced. Now I just simplify. Two is equal to, well, the square root of one plus eight is the square root of nine minus one, continue doing the math. Two is equal to three minus one. Yes, two does equal three minus one, which is two. So I can use this one. So let's go back. So yes, this is an option. All right, so my next one, I'm probably gonna have to make some space here, is two is equal to, and now this time for n, I'm replacing it and I said negative four. No, I said positive four, sorry. So four, or did I say negative? I did say negative, I just wrote it wrong. Apologize for that. Okay, so negative four plus eight, and then over to the side, I still have an n negative, I'm sorry, minus negative four. So pay attention to your signs. Don't be like me. All right, here we go. Two is equal to radical negative four plus eight is simply positive four. And then negative times negative becomes another positive four. Simplify two is equal to two plus four. Well, we can see this is not true. Two cannot equal six. So therefore we understand that this one, this solution will not work, it's extraneous. So when you're asked to identify the extraneous solution, 
That's what it's asking for. Which solution will not work once you substitute it back into the problem? Okay, and again, you have to go to the original problem, not what you've rewritten or, or changed. Okay, subscribe if you haven't already. Have a good one.